All right, well, uh, normally I do interviews these days at a much higher quality than this with a tripod and somebody... Manning, Not that much higher quality. No, that much higher quality, but with a camera uh, and something other than my cell phone, but it is now 1 a.m. in the morning and you are finally available for an interview after winning the... The summer things split. I do for you. Yeah, well, this is also me doing this for you. People will watch this interview and <sighs> will enjoy it. Okay. Uh, so we're in your hotel room. Actually, you know, the shower just turned on because uh, Bioprocess is going to take a shower. That's when he's taking a shower. He doesn't want to be in the. He doesn't want to be in this interview, and he also doesn't want you guys to know that it's him taking a shower. But it's him. Okay. Anyway, so uh, actually, this is not the la the the first time that I have done a interview with you in a hotel after summer championships or playoffs. Do you remember the last time? Was that the one where I was like <laughs> a pro? Uh, maybe? It, no, it was, okay, well, I don't remember if you said it, but it was basically whenever we were at PAX. Yeah, yeah, and it was definitely had, like... you <laughs> placed worst every single time. Yeah, I was like, good shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, now you're here, and this is the second summer championship that you've won. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, I don't know. The king of summer. Yeah, well, <laughs> the summer king, that's what they the call you. The summer king. So what do you, I don't know, what what does that mean for you now that you've done this? Especially after, like, you got kicked from CLG, and so you won last time with CLG, now you won with TSM. Um, well, it's pretty cool to be the first player to win, uh, like, a title on two different teams. Or maybe it's just NALCS, I'm not exactly sure. But, oh, do I look at the camera or look at you? I don't know. No, don't Both. Okay, okay. Well, we've done so many interviews. True, true, true. Um... But for me, I, I don't know, it, was, it felt just, like, very justified, you know, because everyone else was slacking off a lot, and we were always, like, trucking, al trucking along with practice, and this whole, like, our new our coaching staff, like, pushes us extremely hard every day, and it's just, like, it is very tiring, like, I'm not gonna lie, I burnt out twice during this split. During just these last, like, three months, I, I burnt out twice, so, and I think everyone on the team did, so, like, we, we really did just try our best, like, never to slow down. And, like, winning just, yeah, feels feels like we just took what was rightfully ours the entire time. Because we were smashing NA, and we were always better than everyone, while always putting in more time. And also, for me, you know, personally, now now I can hear our bullshit. <laughs> gone. So now, personally, <laughs> first off, all those idiots who said double was a problem, holy crap, feels so good. <laughs> I won on CLG, then I switched teams, played second, narrowly lost in the finals, then I won on TSM. It's definitely not the problem, but um, just shutting those guys up feels really nice. Also, like the fans who stuck with me from CLG, it's like I came off of a high. I was I just won my first championship on CLG. Okay, now I switch to TSM. The people who like switch to TSM with me and continue to be double of fans, even though you know I left my team or I got kicked off my team, they're like must have felt really sad when I got crushed in the finals. The next split, I also felt extremely sad. And then to be able to come back, like, knock CLG out in the semis and then just, like, win it all feels really, really nice. feels nice to, like, be able to do that for my fans, too. So, yeah. I like shutting idiots up, and I like making my fans proud of me. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they are proud of you today. By the way, Bjergsen got MVP. Uh, they got leaked. But then, by the way, did he know it was he got MVP before he got leaked? I, I think so. Nobody, other, for some reason, everyone on the team was kind of awkward about it, and they didn't tell me until it was, like, the day of. I guess there's no reason for them to tell me, but I didn't know that he got MVP until it got leaked on Reddit. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> like I was not salty at all. I actually think Bjergsen deserves it more than me. Everyone was always saying, like, oh, I got robbed of MVP in Season 5 summer, which I agree with. This split, I feel like I haven't really, like, hard-carried that many games. There's sometimes during the split where I would, like, pop off on Lucian or pop off on Sivir, and then in the finals I had, like, one good game. But the, really the truth is, like, Bjergsen is insane. He plays more, way more than me, um, even though I already play, like, all of us already play insane amounts. He, he is just, like, a monster, dude. Like, it's not, it's so easy to win when you have Bjergsen on your team. Let me be honest, like... All the other past iterations of TSM, you guys know. Like, Dyrus, Lost Boys, and Torrid, amazing. Like, you guys know. It's so easy to win when Bjergsen's on your team. So, this guy is uh, this guy is a monster, and I think he definitely does MVP over me. So. Yeah. Well, no one will ever deserve MVP more than the Season 2 MVP Chaos. No. <laughs> okay, that guy's a moron. 
Well, uh, he's God now, and you're. Still I mean, he's even now. he's even XTSM, but. All right, yeah. Well, not not to me. BM. So, uh, obviously, there was a lot of drama that blew up today. You answered a question at the press conference. A lot of people, uh, you know, talking about this now, where basically you had said a morals denied you guys scrims because they wanted you to lose because they didn't want to face C9 and Gauntlet, mm -hmm. and they. So they stopped doing this. And, yeah. and then we saw the Immortal CEO, Noah Winston, say, what, we screamed you guys on Thursday. Maybe you can all say right, some right, yeah, yeah. Instagram. So Noah is, maybe he's not as hands-on with the team as most owners, or you know he doesn't really know the inner well, what's going on, the dialogue that's going on between the teams. I can just tell you guys right now, here's what happened. We came off the semis win against CLG, and now <clears throat> if we win, CLG makes Worlds. Um, and, and if we lose, then... Then CLG doesn't make worlds and they end up playing Immortals in the Gauntlet. That's what Immortals wants, okay? And I said in in the press conference that um, it's absolutely their right as a team to deny us scrims and you know want us to lose, cheer for the other team so that they can have an easier time in the Gauntlet. That is just like everyone has their own self invested self interest. That's fine, um, but I now I'm spiteful because they <laughs> over our practice. I also now want, now I want to see them lose because you know they made it harder for us to win, and I think both teams have this right. You know I have this right to want them to lose, and they have this right to make it harder for us to practice. But Noah, for some reason, th interpreted this as like that we blockaded. They blockaded scrims. The truth is, yes, they did scrim us one set. It was on Thursday, Thursday I think he said. Um, all other days, actually, what happened was. We had asked Immortals to scrim. First day, oh, they're sick, okay? Second day, uh, they're tired. They can't do uh, a, a night block. And we thought that was kind of weird. You know, most teams are actually doing night blocks. So, you know, we log on to the tournament realm, and we can obviously, the tournament realm is a very small realm. We can see that they're scrimming Cloud9. So we're like, oh, you know, that's weird. Um, you know, they had just canceled these blocks with us, or, or refused, maybe not canceled, but refused to scrim us in these a lot of times. Because they don't do night blocks, uh, but they're doing it for Cloud Nine, so I thought that was pretty scummy. Just like not, you know, it's cool if you don't want us to win. It's cool if you say no, we're just gonna scream Cloud Nine instead. But they just said we don't do night blocks, or like we're too tired, or something. Our players get too tired, um, and so you know, the entire time we were we were just screaming CLG five games, Immortals five games. The next day, you know, every every day it's just like five five games of scrims. It's really hard to prepare for finals when you're playing five scrims a day. Uh, we had been used to playing anywhere from like 10, probably like average like 9, 10, 11 scrims a day. And yeah, we basically halved it for these finals because we, we got... <laughs> so um, yeah, no, a little bit, maybe there was some miscommunication. Maybe he just uh, doesn't have enough information on this, but I really hope Cloud9 is on models. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Well, so that's been resolved, uh, at least from your side, and we'll see what Noah has to say about it. Yeah. So now uh, you guys are going to, you also answered my question in the press conference, you're going to Korea for two weeks uh, before Worlds, but that's not starting this week. What's happening this week? This week, uh, we had just we just won the finals, so we're going to take some time off, five, five, six days rest, and finally it's like a mini mini break. Then we're going to go straight into Korea for boot camp and then come back to NA to adjust back to jet lag. Um, Worlds is happening in NA this year, so we want to have that home field advantage, you know, be comfortable. Uh, what What do you think TSM's chances are? Because I think a lot of people feel as though, especially after CLG's performance at MSI, like, oh, North America looks stronger as a region. Mm -hmm. uh, TSM looks really uh, strong after their split, losing only one match. Uh -huh. That match <clears throat> to Phoenix won. Jesus Christ, come on, dude. It flukes happen. Okay, well, yes. As, <laughs> as Dixie would tell you, they fluked their way to Toronto. They did, they did. <laughs> I think that fluke is becoming a meme now. I love flukes. Uh, I love flukes, too. So, anyway, but back to the question. TSM, chances at Worlds? Um, well, no, no. I think no respectable player actually had uh, a real hope for NA to do well at Worlds in the previous splits. I mean, just running them down, season two is too far away. Season three, SKT was undisputed best. Faker was, like, literally just so far ahead of everyone else. He's just insane. Season four, Samsung White, probably one of the best teams in history. 
Then season five, you know, SKT and Tigers are like insane. Um, but this time, actually, you know, I think NA has a real shot at Worlds. Previous times, not so much. I don't think Rocks Tigers or KT are nearly as good as, nearly as ahead as the other times where Korea was like still a dominant region. And yeah, I just, I know that we can win. I study all the Korean VODs. I watch pretty much every single one of their games and they're not nearly as good. They're not nearly as ahead as they were in the previous years. And I think TSM can win for sure. I don't know. Uh, CLG getting second in MSI is a testament to the gap closing. The gap is closing. The gap is closing. The, the wall phrase. is getting 10 feet higher. And that's, that's a different thing, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Or maybe the you sim- could apply it here because North America or the U.S. is where Worlds is happening this year. We're going to build a wall. <laughs> and keep all the four teams out. Wait, actually, that, no, we can't do that. We can't, do that. we can't do that. We can't do that. Only yeah. NA teams show up. Yeah. That's how we win. Uh, we built a wall. <laughs> uh, they can't get in. Uh, once again, USA shows its dominance. Uh, We're the best. NA is the best region. Yeah. We'll build the wall, we'll keep Canada in the wall, and then they'll be... Oh, because it's North America. Oh, yeah. true, it's NA. Yeah, exactly. Vincent can't go back home. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, Vincent. Uh, we built the wall, we forgot to include Canada in the wall, you can't go back home. Uh, to Canada, dead. yeah. That's unfortunate. Alright, so, that's happening. Uh, the wall thing. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. It, normally I don't do interviews at 1am on my phone. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on Biofrost? Um, this is cool. When I picked him up, he was a little turd. Hmm. He was so bad. But now he's pretty good. Okay. I think he could probably hear us from... That's okay. He knows. Okay. Just knows he's... <laughs> or he's just sitting there like this. <laughs> he's crying just... in the bathroom. He's crying <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. And finally, what did you think of the venue and the fans and all that stuff? Oh, yeah, dude. I remember going to Canada with you on vacation. Vancouver. Vancouver. And... The fans are super passionate, you know, I think esports is really big in Canada. A lot of the pro players come from Canada, and I don't think it's, like, a coincidence or anything. So, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. It's, like, it's like little, honestly, Canada reminds me of America, so it's, like, little America 2.0, maybe. Not 2.0. Amer- America 0.5. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I can't say that. I'm from America. Yeah. No, like, um, the fans are actually super polite and respectful, Everything in Canada is really awesome. This is one of the coolest venues I've played at, too. I'm really glad that I was able to win a title at Madison Square Garden, which is super prestigious. The crowd was amazing. And then here was, like, what, 15 or 20K people? Yeah, 15K. And, like, the crowd was amazing, too. So, yeah, it's it really just motivates me a lot to be able to play in venues like this. Very good. Well, uh, that's that. I think for this interview, is there anything that mm-hmm. you would like to say to any of the fans? Thank you guys for supporting me on this long, long journey. Um, yeah, my crew's been like five or six years now, so I'm very happy to just be able to still continue and be successful even now. And shout out to all our sponsors. There's a lot of you. They all and know I appreciate you, you know who you are, and I appreciate you guys' support. Uh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, sorry everyone for doing the interview on the phone. Uh, this is what happens when it's 1 a.m. Yeah, my brain is gone, dude. I have a Canadian contractor for an event who has to go home. And then I still have an interview to do with Peter, so we get to do it then. Uh, or now, on the phone, this way. Could not have done, been done better. It's a throwback to whenever we used to live together, and the, we used to do stuff like this. Yeah, of course. Anyway, uh, thank you for the interview. Thanks for still being awake. Uh, thank you, You're Biofrost. Welcome. I know you hear us somewhere. You're in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> in there somewhere. All right. You can check out the rest of our coverage of all things esports here at Yahoo Esports.